Welcome to our service on this Advent Sunday and as you can see my wife has put together an Advent wreath and we're going to light the first candle um, which is known as the candle of hope. And there's a prayer that goes along with this so let's pray. Dear God we pray for the hope that is in Christ to come into our lives in a new way. May we become hope that is alive in our world. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Our gathering prayer, eternal God and Father, we thirst for your love and we long for your presence. Come, Lord, and refresh us with the water of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> and together we say our confession. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our Lord and God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins, and set you free from them. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> and as a thanksgiving, we say together the Gloria. Glory be to God in heaven. Peace on earth to all mankind. Father, heavenly King, creator, God of power, undefined. Praise and honour, thanks we offer. Worship you with heart and mind. Jesus Christ, our Saviour, only Son of God, by faith we know. Lamb of God, the world's Redeemer, love and mercy to us show. Seated at the Father's right hand, intercede for us below. You alone, O Lord, are holy. For Jesus Christ, you are most high. With the Father and the Spirit, Trinity, to you we cry, Alleluia, Alleluia. You, O God, we glorify. <clears throat> and our collect, the first Sunday in Advent. Almighty Father, your Son came to us in humility as our Saviour, and at the last day he will come again in glory as our Judge. Give us grace to turn away from darkness to the light of Christ, that we may be ready to welcome him and to enter into his kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> our Gospel reading. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Luke chapter 21 verses 25 to 36 There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On the earth nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world. For the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up, 
and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. And he told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. Be always on watch. And pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen. And that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. <coughs> Welcome to the first day of the Church New Year, Advent Sunday. Today in churches we, we change our colours to purple instead of the more regular green. And that's because this is a special Sunday. This is Advent Sunday from the Latin word avenio, meaning coming. This is the time of the year leading up to our remembrance of Christ coming among us at Christmas. And this is possibly the only time of the year, the ecclesiastical year and the commercial marketing year, when they both seem to be roughly in sync. Advent is also about a second looking forward to Jesus' return in the last days. During Advent, we prepare ourselves for the coming of Christmas. We change our colours, uh, select special Bible readings and special music in the lead up. And in the same way, the stores change their colours. They play special music, they announce special sales and seemingly gear themselves up also for Christmas. But this gearing up for Christmas is roughly where the similarity ends. And the changing colours shows this difference because where the shops start to decorate in red, green and white, we move to the colour purple, the colour of penitence and sombre reflection. Where the shops put on display the jovial figures of Santa and his elves, <clears throat> the Bible readings for Advent introduce us to shadowy figures like Zechariah and Elizabeth and to John the Baptist who comes to teach us each year about this time with his own particular brand of Christmas cheer. And where Christmas messages on Christmas cards give us, a, give us the trivial cliches about peace and goodwill and how this special season brings out the best in people, the Bible readings for Advent start on an entirely different note as they speak about death and destruction and the end of the world as we know it. <clears throat> I'm going to read verse 25 to 27 again. There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish, anguish uh, and perplexity at the roaring and the tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things happen to take, begin, when these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads because your redemption is drawing near. The lead up to Christmas isn't part of the silly season, but part of a, a somber season in the church. And I wonder whether we shouldn't be developing our, with our Christmas decor in mind. Because instead of a Christmas tree, a cactus would better symbolise the church season leading up to Christmas. The Bible readings that are set are more spiky than smooth and silky. Well, most of us haven't put up our trees yet, no, we haven't in this household. And, and when we do, it will of course be covered in the traditional lights and tinsel and baubles. And there's nothing at all wrong with that. It is, after all, the celebration of Christ's birth. We also know that Christmas can 
uh, can be a, a, and should be a time of peace and goodwill. And there's certainly nothing wrong with that either. However, the commercial version of Christmas shows that the church and its people have been made captive to the tinsel and glitter. There seems to be a whole culture growing that loves the idea of gentle Jesus, meek and mild, the healer and the miracle worker. And they would be happy for Jesus to change the world. But what they want is a gradual social reform in a democratic framework. Our gospel reading this morning shows that this definitely isn't Jesus' way. Jesus isn't democratic. He's Lord and Saviour and his way of reform is completely radical. His reform is to totally dismantle and rebuild. And we know that the world is in a shocking state and so to slightly change the world for, bet for the better is like offering a, a headache to, some to somebody who needs a headache tablet, to somebody who needs major surgery. Remember how Jesus discussed his ministry at the Last Supper. It was a quiet, gentle meal with friends. It was until Jesus started breaking bread and pouring out wine, talking about his broken body and his blood being poured out. Salvation for Jesus was never something that was going to be cheap and easy. It was bloody and it was painful. And the final salvation of creation won't be something clean and clinical, but framed by war and death, blood and pain. The real point and our task in this season is to wade through all the tinsel to see that Christmas is a time for celebrating the coming of Jesus that happened at Bethlehem and also to renew our vision of the final coming of Jesus at the end of time. Most of us are more focused on the end of our mortgage than they are by the prospect of the end of the age. If that's true of us then it's time to wake up. Advent should cause us to do two important things, to watch and to wait. This is what Jesus calls us to do every Advent. Jesus isn't coming to Bethlehem this Christmas. Bethlehem is history. Bethlehem has, has moved. Bethlehem is now located wherever we are, wherever we love, trust, laugh, cry and take a stand. Whenever we tell the truth, forgive, or just wait on God to teach us what to do, that is Bethlehem. Where we are is the new Bethlehem. And that's not only God's gift to us, but it's also his challenge to us. What we do with it, be it positive or negative, is our response to God. Now, despite the gloom in the warning from Jesus about the end, Advent is a chance for us to look forward, to see the world not for what it is, but for what it could be. <clears throat> Advent is a call for us to see the signs in the sun, moon and the stars, the anguish and perplexity among the nations, and instead of being afraid, to do what Jesus tells us. Stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Excuse me. <coughs> As the people of God, we look forward in hope rather than in fear. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Excuse me. Hosanna in the highest. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. All of our worship is focused on the announcement of God's victory. And as we take communion, we're remembering that our Lord's Last Supper we're remembering our Lord's Last Supper and at the same time we're looking forward to the day we will eat with him in his heavenly kingdom. We have the assurance of Jesus guiding us in our walk through life, rejoicing with us during the good times and supporting us through the bad. We come together to receive his body and his blood and we're sent out to take his good news to the world. We all love to receive gifts. But so much of the joy we feel in this season comes from giving, sharing presents with family and friends. And when we expand that giving, we become part of God's future when all will be satisfied. It's, it's very good to give to charities and 
the less fortunate at this time. But the greatest gift one person can give another is the knowledge of Christ. An expansion of the babe in the manger, offering others a glimpse of uh, 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 God's glorious salvation through the adult Christ. With this gift, others will be able to stand up and lift their heads no matter what's happening around them. So while Advent is a time to look forward once again to celebrate the birth of Jesus, it's also a time to look forward to the completion of God's plan. It's a time to be aware that although the return of Christ will be heralded by massive upheaval, we are to look through and past that to the time when, by standing firm, this will be replaced with joy. The ultimate joy of standing before Jesus, the Son of Man, our Saviour, our brother and our friend. And we affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Lord, help, to, help us to prepare for your coming in your church. Help us to get rid of the clutter, the dead habits we cling on to. Sweep away the cobwebs of all the meaningless things we place in the way of doing things your way. Open our churches to the refreshing wind of your spirit to give us a new hope and a new vision. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Heavenly Lord, help us to prepare for your coming in the world. Remove the despair which is blighting our politics. Refresh our world to make it a place of justice, goodness and truth. Establish your peace in places where people have known only violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Lord, prepare us for your coming in our communities. Heal the social ills which bring us to the point of despair. May our privilege as citizens of heaven inspire us as citizens of our own communities to do all we can to promote the care of our neighbourhoods and their people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Lord, prepare us for your coming in those in need. Give us eyes to see your face in the face of the needy and the homeless. Enable us where we can to be part of the, uh, the, the, the part of the solution rather than the problem. May we never walk by on the other side, pretending that we do not see. Advent Lord, come and refresh our faith. Give us eyes to see both the problems around us and as we look towards Christmas to see the wonder of the baby in the manger. And as we await your coming, Lord, open our hearts to be ready for your arrival. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> and we share the peace together. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Shalom. Our Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your son, Jesus Christ, to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, the broken bread and wine outpoured, may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, 
gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did in him. We plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when his kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. <clears throat> and we say together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. This is the table, not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love him and want to love him more. So come, those who have much faith and those who have little. It is Jesus himself who invites you. It is his will that those who seek him should find him here. We say together our prayer after communion. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies as a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. May you find in Christ crucified a strength in times of darkness, a support in times of weakness, and the assurance that life is eternal. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you, those you love and those you pray for now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And until we meet again next Sunday, Stay well, stay blessed, and know that you are his beloved.